It is now 20 years since the late great Gwynalf Williams recorded his last programme. People's Remembrancer, Hanesse the Bobble, was, his, was the 30th programme I had the privilege of working on with him, and the challenge for entrance in this category of communicating wealth history with his kind of power and passion is a formidable one. There were three entrants, one from each of the Welsh broadcasters. 2013 was the centenary of the terrible St. Genneth disaster, and the entries from both Esped Warek and ITV Wales were on that subject. Covio St. Genneth included a brief but effective dramatisation, and ITV's entry was helped by Trevor Fishlock's telling narration. Both had chillingly effective moments, but the jury, Kenwyn Edwards, the historian, Dr. Erin White, and myself, concluded that the programmes felt as if they were made because the event had to be commemorated rather than because the makers had anything new or illuminating to say about it. BBC Wales' entry was on the miners' strike of 1984-85, to presented by Kim Howells. Actively involved in the strike himself, it made no pretense at objectivity, any more than Gwyn Alps' programmes did. There were moments where they could have done with some of Gwyn's aggression, particularly in the interview with Michael Heseltine, but the jury were impressed by Kim Howell's eloquence and self-criticism. It was shot beautifully and edited effectively, used music well, and told its sad story powerfully. Day after day, for a whole year, I saw close up the heroism and the anger of men and women who sustained the strike, often in the face of massive pressure from the forces of the state. There were men coming into my office just down the road here in Swansea, in tears, in tears. Their houses were being repossessed, their marriages were breaking up. Nobody who grew up in mining communities could fail to be moved by these experiences. But I do want to raise some awkward questions. About the problem of trying to sustain a national strike when there hadn't been a national ballot. About a flawed national leadership that sometimes seemed to be absent. About the logic and wisdom of demanding a huge increase in coal production when it was clear that the key markets for coal were already in steep decline. Not all of my friends from the strike will agree with me when we talk about this. But they'll always be my friends from an epic struggle that failed. The jury unanimously agreed that this year the Gwyn Alf Award should go to the strike. Well, it's fantastic to receive an award in memory of a great historian and from a great filmmaker in Colin Thomas. Uh, thanks to Adrian Davis and Ellis Owen at BBC Wales for supporting this film so well. The extraordinary editing skills of Jane Morell, who was terrific throughout. To the people, the men and women of the coal field, uh, for their tenacity, their humanity, and their dignity. Uh, they were amazing to meet and to be reminded of their extraordinary experience. And finally, a big thank you to Kim Howells, who presented this in such an extraordinary fashion. We felt that we could balance two very different things. One was living through that extraordinary year, the excitement, the pain, the betrayal of it, and at the same time, give some kind of cool assessment of it and why it failed and why it was wrongly led by the national leadership in Sheffield. And Kim did this and remembered the extraordinary commitment of the people of the South Wales Coalfield, who were the biggest critics of that leadership, but remembered their huge tenacity in staying out right to the end. It was a deeply moving and privileging experience. And Kim was an amazing presenter, and it was deeply moving to see 
the way he and the people who fought that strike together embraced each other now. I think you should hear from him. Uh, thanks, thanks to BBC Wales, thanks to Green Bay, to my, my great old friend Colin, and this is for the, uh, the incomparable miners, their families and supporters of Wales. Thanks very much. Can you tell us a little bit about how the idea of the programme came about in the first place? Well, it was a dialogue between uh, Adrian Davis at the BBC and Green Bay, and we were exploring how to deal with the 30th anniversary of the miners' strike of 1984 to 5. And it was clear to us that the inside story that we really needed was the one that could only be told by Kim, uh, because Kim was right in the middle of events, uh, a, a key player in making uh, the strike hold together and developing it in Wales and elsewhere and so we approached Kim and Kim agreed to do it. Can you tell us a bit Kim about from your standpoint what it was like to be involved in, in this telling of this story from, from 30 years ago that you were so personally involved in? Well it, it was told with a great deal of professional expertise because Green Bay the company that made it, Phil directed it, they, they know Wales, they know the people of Wales. It was a very emotional uh, Roller coaster of a production. Uh, on two occasions, I burst into tears, and uh, my reputation was saved on the cutting room floor. Uh, it was an extraordinary experience for me. Uh, simply going and meeting people I hadn't seen for 30 years uh, has had a tremendous effect on me, and I think on everybody who was part of that production. Did making the program did it change anything, or was there anything that you? discovered that you felt differently now about that you might have done 30 years ago? No, I think, I think everybody who lived through that uh, had arrived at their own analysis of what occurred in 1984-85, but their stories had never been told, and what, what Phil George and his team did was allow that story to be told, and it's a great story, it's a, a story of heroism, of enormous tenacity and also of tragedy, and it's been told now. And what was the most enjoyable aspect of, of making the programme for you? Well, in the end, for all the fun of being on the road and shooting it with Kim and with a terrific crew, in the end, of course, it's meeting the amazing people of the Caulfield Gang. I mean, we saw in the clip in the ceremony uh, the powerful memories of, uh, of Terry Thomas, who was the Vice President of the South Wales NUM during the action. And to talk to people like Terry and uh, Maya Francis and Christine Williams um, in the Dillis Valley Women Support Group, um, people like Tony Chiani, uh, Tony Chiano in, in Canhydra in West Wales. These people are extraordinary. Uh, they're articulate, they're clear-minded, and they have huge hearts.